Hey, scholars. Um, I got a question the other day from a viewer named uh, Becca asking how to reduce the order of differential equations. That sounds pretty uh, abstract, pretty beefy, but it really isn't. Um, we uh, work with differential equations a lot. I know of no physical law that isn't expressed in terms of differential equations. So if you're doing aerodynamics or hydraulics or signal processing or electromagnetics or whatever, orbital mechanics, it's all differential equations. In fact, as a professor, an awful lot of what I do is protecting undergraduates from differential equations. So uh, we solve them a lot, well, usually in software, almost always in software. But to put them into the software, a lot of times you have to format them correctly. Now, there's a couple different descriptors we use for differential equations. One of them is, is the differ differential equation an ordinary equation or a partial differential equation. Well, I wrote down an ordinary differential equation. Ordinary just means it has one uh, independent variable. So if we're looking at x double dot, x dot, and x, and t, what we're really looking, we're trying to the function x is actually a function of time, so we want to think of that as the independent variable and that as a dependent variable. Just to make sure we're all on board here, when you're solving a differential equation, you don't get a number, you get a function. When I'm trying to solve this, okay, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find a function x of t that makes that true. Right? That's the big idea here. And this is just an equation with a slope and a curvature in it, so it's no big deal. Don't, you don't need to freak out. Um, so the other thing you need on an equation like this is called an initial value problem where we know some conditions at, at time t0, whatever the first time is, and we use that to figure out what the, the uh, value of the function is at, at times after that. So in case you want to go try to solve this, I made this up. As far as I know, it doesn't have any physical meaning. Um, I said that t0 equals 0, and what else? I'm looking at my computer screen here. I said x of 0, hang on a second there, yeah, x of 0 equals 1 and x dot of 0 equals 1, okay? So those are the initial conditions. That's what I'm trying to do here. If you want to put this into your favorite uh, number crunching package, use those. It does work out. At least I got it to work out. Um, so here's the deal. A lot of number crunching packages don't do second order differential equations. Second order just means it's got a second derivative and there's third order and fourth order and so on. Um, so how do you turn this into a first order equation? Well, you can't, but you can turn it into two first order equations. So if I have one second order equation, I can turn it into two first order equations. So the order times the number of equations is a constant. If this was a fourth order equation, I could turn it into four first order equations. All right? And it's a very, very simple process. What you do is you make another variable, and they, sometimes they call this a dummy variable. So I'm going to say that z equals x dot. Okay? That right there is my dummy variable. I just made it up. Now, I made it up in a, in a very uh, a definitional kind of way. I mean, this really is, we really are going to find that. We really are going to find what z of t is, okay? So it's not bogus. It does, it's not that it's not mathematically valid. It's just we're, we're renaming x dot as z, okay? So, z dot equals x double dot. Right, if I, if that is a real variable, and it is, um, it equals, it's equal to x dot. Well, the derivative of that is equal to x double dot. That's all I'm saying. So what I can do here is I can put z in wherever I need to, and I can write it this way. z dot equals z minus x minus sine of t. And remember what we've got here. z, z is z of t. just as we've got x of t. Okay, this is a function of time just like this was. Right? Again, we're trying to find functions that make this true. That's the idea of solving a differential equation. So there I've got it, but we're not done yet. The other thing I have to tell the solver is I have to tell it what z is. x dot equals z. Okay? So what I've got right now is two differential equations, and they're coupled. So variables in one appear in the other one. That's what coupled means. But nothing beyond first order appears. So I turn one second order differential equation into two 
first order differential equations. And if you're uh, into terminology, um, there's probably more than one thing to call this. I've always heard it called state space. Okay. I'm not sure where that name came from, and I, I flummoxed an in, uh, a, a very smart engineer one time by, by naively asking, what's a state? And he wasn't too sure. I think he finally came up with a good answer for me. Um, my guess is the states are x and t, or x and z, okay? Remember, we're finding z of t and x of t, but so a differential equation solver, an ODE solver, an ordinary differential equation solver, that doesn't know how to solve a second order differential equation generally can solve two first order differential equations. So there you have it. We're reducing the order of a differential equation by using state space. And this does work with uh, uh, higher orders too. You just use more dummy variables as you need them. That's all it is. So I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.